A lot of people don't know that Nationwide Insurance is the largest farm insurer in the country. Example, this tractor. There's multiple ways to cover your equipment. It is replacement cost, actual cash value, insuring the GPS system on it. In addition to tractors, we also cover any implements that you would like to cover. It's like this front end loader as a value added to your tractor or on its own. A lot of times, the only way we will insure a farm is if we come to your site. We're gonna walk it, we're gonna talk it, we're gonna find out what you do and what your interests are. We're gonna customize it so that you get full benefit with the broadest coverage that's available on the market today. A lot of people find out at the time of a claim that they were not properly covered. That is my worst fear. So we make sure going in that you are covered properly. Don't forget to insure your sprayer. A lot of people say, I rode by and didn't see you at your office. That's cause I was probably on a farm. Hello everybody and welcome. I'm glad to have with me today Rodney Smith and Rodney was in town today. You've been speaking to the Civitan Club. Yes, sir. And uh, we were talking off camera a few minutes ago and uh, anytime I hear somebody say they served in the service, we have our VA hospital, you know, here in Dublin and serves 52 counties and I get to spend a lot of time with the veterans out there and uh, Rodney spent 24 years in the Navy and I want to first of all thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. And uh, uh, it's so much fun to be out at the VA and be a, a, among um, so many di different kind of men. Uh, and uh, what I love the best is to see when we pledge the flag or, or sing the national anthem, uh, and a lot of men can't stand, you know, they've lost limbs. But those uh, guys on, in, uh, with their uh, sticks there, I'm trying to say uh, uh, crutches, but uh, they just barely get up. You know, they give all the energy mm -hmm. they get because it's natural to them to Thank get you. up and pledge that flag. They know it's just a natural thing because uh, they fought uh, and you served so we can enjoy the very freedoms we're enjoying right this minute. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sitting on this set and we can talk about anything we want to talk about. Uh, nobody's, the military's not going to come in and tell us we can't talk about uh, what we're going to talk about today or anything, but, um, you know, I wish a lot of those NFL players could see these people in the VA hospital no, and what I they agree. fought for, but, but I do thank you for your service. Uh, sincerely, well, thank, thank you. you for that, and I didn't want to go by without mentioning that, but we're going to talk about church safety today, and uh, Robert Drew actually called me a few weeks ago and told me about you going to be in town. I had to, to get you on the set and talk with you and uh, because it's such a... Uh, important thing now is the world we live in. I grew up, we didn't even lock our church. We could go in and out, and I grew up close to my church, and we could go in and out, and doors were never locked. But now, uh, you gotta lock the churches. Uh, you gotta think about church security and safety. Uh, we saw in South Carolina, uh, the, the terrible, terrible thing that happened there. Uh, uh, men and women just uh, having prayer meeting and serving their Lord. And this guy comes in and kills uh, several of them, I guess, uh, yes. quite a few. But uh, what made you uh, go down this road here? Well, uh, right after the uh, South Carolina shooting, um, actually it was July the 1st, uh, I went down to the Hall County business office and applied for my uh, business license. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the good Lord gave me a talent. And, um, and so right now I am doing what I love to do when I do best is, uh, is train. Mm -hmm. um, just, uh, just not churches, but uh, real estate agents, situation awareness, oh, less man. lethal defense, yes. Mm. Uh, basic pistol, concealed carry classes, uh, homeowners, homeowners associations, businesses. Uh, we travel all over Georgia and uh, we train uh, those individuals. Uh, you know, we're trying to empower individuals, uh, build their confidence up. 
I get phone calls all day long uh, from uh, husbands and wives and uh, boyfriends or girlfriends and such saying, hey, I want to get classes for me and my whoever. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's just a wonderful thing. Yep. Well, I didn't think about that. You know, we talked about church security, but uh, uh, the terrible thing happened to the lady in real estate. And that's um, you, country people like us that live around Dublin, Lawrence County, you know, we think we're safe everywhere we go. Uh, you know, I'll stop and get gas at flash foods at night and really never think about that. You know, I'm not scared to die. You know, I'd be better off than you were if I died right now. But, you know, I'd love to see, talking about those grandkids, um, I'd love to live and see them grow up. And, uh, more than that, um, save others' lives if I was in a situation. And uh, we talked about that, you know. What good's a gun if you leave it in a car and exactly. you don't have it on you? And, and most of us, a lot of us have permits. If you don't, uh, I encourage you right now, just go down to Judge Harper's office pay her the, I think, around $40, and you go out and get fingerprinted at the sheriff's office, mm -hmm. and it ain't a couple of weeks, you get your a permit in the mail, it looks like a driver's license, has your picture and all on it. But And it's good uh, for five years. Yes, that's what I like about it. it and it's, it is very inexpensive, that's a great point. You, you divide it out over five years, it, it's really not expensive mm -hmm. at all. But talk about churches, you know, we talked about the situation in South Carolina. Uh, I go to a small country church, and uh, we have some larger churches here, but um, what do you say to churches without giving, you can't give me your whole uh, uh, spiel here while we're talking, it takes too long, but what are some of the main things when you're introducing this into a church? Because people say, well, I, I don't really want a gun at church. Well, it's not all about guns. It's about church security. Exactly, exactly. So talk about that. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Um, probably one of the most important parts is really uh, our qualifications and certifications. You know, uh, I'm a state certified firearms instructor, mm -hmm. uh, what they call POST, Peace Officer Standing Training. Uh, I also train unarmed, armed, and private detectives for the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. uh, NRA training counselor. So our qualifications are heads and shoulders over most companies or, or individuals training. Um, what we're trying to do is we, we uh, want to give individuals or well individuals and churches or organizations uh, you know empower them uh, w with the confidence to where they can actually uh, you know respond. Uh, we we start off with situation awareness, knowing your surroundings, mm. uh, you know seeing things before they materialize. That way, if you can run, mm -hmm. hide, fight, whatever you right. need to do. Uh, so that's. Probably the number one thing you need to do is understand situation awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, uh, you know, uh, use of deadly force, mm -hmm. uh, ammunition, uh, be able to teach you how to clear rooms and how to act and respond. And most important thing is having the security team acting like a security team. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not a bunch of individuals. They're mm -hmm. more of a more of a SWAT type of uh, atmosphere mm -hmm. where they can go in there and uh, do whatever, whatever they need to do from just not an active situation, uh, maybe a medical situation as well. Yes. Uh, things mm -hmm. of that nature like that. Wow. Okay. Uh, you just throwing things out here I never thought of. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, medical situations help more than people realize. Um, yeah. I saw on TV last night there was a lady on television that passed out yesterday on live television. And uh, I think they hesitated, it seemed like a few minutes before they, you know, maybe they were in awe. It's the same thing with that gun permit. What good is a gun permit if you've not been trained properly uh, how to shoot the gun, not to freeze up? Exactly. Uh, because the last thing we want to do is shoot somebody. Exactly. I mean, any normal person don't want to shoot anybody. But you can't freeze up if that time comes and, and you're um, you're put in that situation so uh, I'm, I know you teach all of those things so we want to continue talking about that we need to take a quick commercial break and uh, we'll be back right after this and continue talking with Rodney stay with us we'll be back right after this in 2011 we had a really bad snowstorm and we were out of power for six days and we couldn't find a hotel to go to that would accommodate the family and the dog. We lost hundreds of dollars worth of steak and hamburgers and things like that that we had in our freezer downstairs. 
And once Hurricane Sandy hit in this area, it was very, very traumatic for everybody. But thanks to the Generac 20 kilowatt generator that we have, we, you know, we barely noticed it. We have heat, we have air conditioning, we have all of it. The world around us was very chaotic, but in our home, we were, felt very safe and secure. I'd be more than happy to buy, buy it again. You know, it's, it's one of the best investments I've ever made in this house. Don't ever get caught in the dark again. Call the City of Dublin Natural Gas today. 0% financing and we'll just add it to your bill. The City of Dublin Natural Gas, the smart choice. Welcome back everybody. Uh, we've been talking with Rodney Smith here about different kinds of security, Rodney. And uh, let's talk about, you, you mentioned a few moments ago about uh, say couples or uh, uh, people like that, maybe not just couples, it may be um, a homeowners association or something. What do you do when you go in to uh, talk to them? And I know you're going to probably go back to that one point again, being aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. That's always important. It's huge. Uh, That's huge. Because we relax. You know, if I pull up at Kroger this evening or tonight and buy, say I buy gas there, grocery stores open, there's lights everywhere, you wouldn't think. Uh, that somebody would have a gun, but where there's people, there's criminals. And exactly. they're looking for those situations. Uh, what would we do? What if I, let, let me just throw this out at you. What if I'm at Kroger pumping gas tonight and I see uh, someone uh, grabbing or attacking a woman, say two or three gas pumps down? What's the first thing I should do? Knowing that I carry a gun, which I don't really want that to be the first option, but what should I do in that situation? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to report it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, because the cavalry is not going to come if you don't report it. Right. Uh, so you might be overwhelmed. There might be more than one guy type of situation. Uh, there's multiple scenarios. Right. Uh, first thing you need to do is report it. Uh, and then try to de-escalate the situation the mm -hmm. best you possibly can. Uh, you know, deadly force is the last resort. Right. And so what you want to do is de-escalate the best you can. Mm -hmm. uh, if you cannot de-escalate it, then you're going to then... Possibly, you maybe have to use use a deadly force. Mm -hmm. um, that would mean you know uh, you're going to shoot until the threat stops. Yeah, yeah, and and that's one thing in a group setting. Usually, there's multiple people pumping gas, and I use this example again. But uh, uh, first, call nine one one. Say, hey, I'm at Kroger. There's a guy beating a woman, trying to kidnap or whatever I I see. And if you do see a couple of guys around there, immediately. Uh, go into action. Hey, we got to do something here. I have a gun on me, but I don't want to use it. Let's try to de-escalate it. I'm yeah. going to try to talk to the guy. Right. And uh, where three people may come in and that may escalate it. But if one person talked to them, That's right. and then if you, they, the other two see it's not working, so um, they can move in. And, and even here, we're developing a plan where you go into these situations, homeowner association, churches, whatever, and you help them develop a plan. Exactly. And that's basically the, uh, what your company, when you set it up, you're basically trying to save people. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, for example, uh, for churches, mm -hmm. we, uh, it's called SOP, mm -hmm. Standard Operation Procedures. We will help you write your SOP, mm -hmm. also develop your SOP, mm -hmm. as well as update your SOP. Okay. And that is your Standard Operation Procedures for any situation that might occur i.e. You know, natural disaster, hurricane, mm -hmm. tornado, things of that nature like that. Then, of course, you have your active threats, medical emergencies, things of that nature like that. That way, if you have a new team member that comes on board that wants to be on the team, of course, they're going to read the SOP, mm -hmm. sign off on the SOP, mm -hmm. and then uh, understand that they uh, understand they read the SOP, mm -hmm. and which is a, kind of a guideline. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we talk, we have information there on the screen, uh, phone number, um, Facebook page, uh, you see all the ways to, to get in touch with Rodney. So we're going to leave it up there. You can uh, get your pen and write that down. And uh, members leaving, members coming, uh, no matter how small a church or how big a church, you can develop that plan, right? Exactly. Yes. I mean, they could be 10 people in the church or a thousand. Uh, and sure, the church with a thousand, you're going to need a, a much bigger SOP and doors to cover. And yes. uh, larger team. Right, a larger team. Do you recommend to uh, uh, churches, I'm going to stay on the churches, 
Do you recommend the larger churches to lock doors, to have people manning those doors? During services? Yeah. Um, yeah, yes, sir. Um, you know, you are authorized to have doors locked. Of course, they have to have, they have the, what they call the panic bar right. type thing. Uh, yes, you can have them locked. Highly recommend to keep all doors locked. Also, right. minimize access into the church as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't want uh, people coming and going through all your accesses. Uh, you know, designate uh, those entrances and accesses as well. Um, maybe have a man at some point in time, and of course, then have them secured. Uh, and then maybe even if you have to, maybe put a watch on them. And have mm -hmm. a have a security guard uh, maintain that maintain that door. That way, no one's coming in and out. Right. In the civitan today, you had business leaders in there, and uh, probably had several in there. Uh, what was some of their concerns? Some of the questions that you had today. Um, some of the really uh, when are when are you authorized to use uh, you know actually to carry a gun? Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of explained to them that you're you know to, to be able to uh, if you're allowed you know your car is an extension of your home right and so you're authorized to have a gun in your car mm -hmm. if you have or do not have your your Georgia weapons carry license because mm -hmm. it's an extension of your home. That's exactly uh, right. Um, you know questions like that uh, tr our training a lot of you know basic pistol. Concealed carry classes, home defense, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the church training as well. And we do want to mention there, it is an extension of your home, but if you are stopped by law enforcement, advise them right up front that you do have that gun in the car. You don't want, uh, we want law enforcement to be comprised of all kind of things, you know. And if you got a gun in the car, just tell them when you hand the license and insurance, and I'm sure uh, when you talk to law enforcement or individuals, and just tell them I have a gun in the glove box or laid in the back seat. Or... Mostly, if you have that gun on your person, mainly strapped on you, uh, uh -huh. holster such, uh, and you have to get out of your car, that is when you have to tell them that you have a gun in your car. Because uh, one, one thing we don't want to do is escalate the situation. No, sir. Uh, yeah. And, of course, the officer it will he'll take uh, aggressive measures uh, to make sure he's safe. Absolutely, and, and that's what we want. Um, yeah, I went through a roadblock, uh, roadblock recently and uh, my gun was laying on the seat because I'd sit down in the seat to drive many miles and uh, I pulled up to the roadblock. They happened to be looking for uh, some escapees and uh, they, they, you know, when I got up to them, I was in line, they waved me right on through, saw the gun and probably saw me or uh, never even asked me about the gun, mm -hmm. you know. And, and normally, uh, you know, again, it, you're, it's an extension of your home, so, you know, they really don't care if you have a gun in there or not. Just yeah. don't go reaching for it no, or so no. on and so forth. Yeah. Exactly right. Goodness, yeah. no. Yeah. Have some common sense. Yeah, huh? well, yeah, well, well, yeah. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> How about private detectives? That's got to be interesting. Uh, you do that for the Secretary of State. Uh, yes, sir. Unarmed, armed security guards as well as Secretary of State. I'm a certified instructor, yes, sir. Okay, what goes with that? I mean, what? how long a training and what goes into that? Well, the, uh, the unarmed portion is 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, armed is 24 hours plus 16 hours, which is a total of 40 hours for that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the uh, uh, private detective, it, that's a totally different certification, okay. which is 72 hours. Okay. And that, that all, uh, deal, most of it is uh, classroom portion. And then, of course, they have, to, uh, we, uh, then they have to shoot a course of fire as well as to qualify with the gun they're going to carry on duty. Wow. That's got to be interesting. Um, and uh, how often do you train? Uh, I was just wondering, private detectives, I don't hear much of that in smaller towns. Uh, how often do you train private detectives? Private detectives is not quite as popular as you think it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, unarmed and armed security guard is really the, the big one. Yeah, uh, they, I there's can see more of those, yeah. mostly with the hurricane, uh, like Puerto Rico and such places like that. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of a lot of uh, security guards uh, that want to get certified so they get onto Puerto Rico. Um, but it's it's rather interesting. I mean, you you meet. I mean, I get guys from all over all over the country to come in uh, to get their certifications or because uh, they have to uh, qualify annually. Uh, the mm -hmm. course of five, that they actually have the, the eight hours continuing education, which is classroom, use of deadly force, ammunition, situation awareness, in conjunction with their range training and certifications. Okay. Uh, is there anything we hadn't covered that uh, you'd like to say to the viewers before we go? 
I just think everybody should have training on situation awareness mm -hmm. um, because uh, just the situation there last, uh, was it last night in New York? Yeah. Uh, where they didn't even have a gun. Well, he had a, uh, a, what, an airsoft gun and a BB gun. Yeah. Uh, but he drove a, a truck. Uh, this is uh, very, very important to be able to, uh, you know, understand your situation awareness. Yep. And people wearing those headphones and those earbuds, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, that's not a good thing to be out in public. Why? Because yep. uh, you're taking away one of your, your natural, na natural senses. Yeah, that's so true. I see runners especially. Uh, you need to hear the screeching of the wheels or the car door slamming or, or running behind uh, you or things yes. whatever it might be so I've always thought that, um, that that's really really dangerous and I'm not in that business but it looks dangerous to me uh, and it, yeah that, that's how a lot of people get mugged because of uh, because they're, they're, they can't hear yeah and we go back uh, to what we said earlier be aware of your surroundings that's uno number mean, one yeah that's that's yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of people take, uh, they, they don't take advantage of the training. Um, you know, they, they think that they're prepared. Little do they know they're not. They're, no, they're not. Because it's, you know, you have to be re reiterated. You got to be, you know, you have to have somebody kind of uh, training you once in a while to, to get that, that motor mm -hmm. running again. Okay. Uh, uh, deacons, pastors, um, uh, companies, individuals. Uh, you see the information on the screen there. Uh, I really wish you'd give Rodney a call and uh, he could send you more information. Check him out on Facebook. Um, I guess everybody's on Facebook these days. Believe it or not, there's not, not, quite as, not as many as you, yeah, as you think there are. Okay, well, we took our selfie before we started, so those of you <laughs> yeah. know what selfies are. I know a lot of the younger people, but, uh, but please, please be aware of your surroundings. I mean, we all live here together. Uh, and uh, that's so important, and that's some of the best information we got today. But uh, please, uh, I'm taking this back to my church and sharing this information because um, I think it's very important. I just think it's very important. So I'm going to take it back to my church, uh, and I would love to invite you to take it back to your church and, uh, and get with Rodney and let him together, y'all come up with this SOP. Very good, that's sir. the only way it's going to work, isn't it? Yes, sir. Thank yes, you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, you very much. Thank you so much, Rodney Smith, for being here today. And we thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm.